Sifuna with us. Good morning, sir. Morning, how are you? I'm great. Thank you very much for calling us. So let's talk about this arbitration sentence. Some of those concerns, it's a matter I understand that's in court. Uh, yeah. But what are the concerns you and other lawyers have in as far as uh, this uh, project goes? Uh, first of all, I've listened to the uh, speaker this morning. And I agree with him when he says that sometimes, unless people pick it and uh, pull down walls the way we saw yesterday in Nangata, nothing will ever happen. And uh, it is not for the LSK chair or even the current LSK council to lecture anyone on good practices when it comes to transparency or even corruption. Sophia it took a court order for this current uh, chair and the law society council to give us documents on that arbitration center. Mm -hmm. And this they took to the purported SGM to be voted on by members before they even gave us the documents. Number two, Mm. He claimed that uh, the resolutions on the arbitration center were passed overwhelmingly by the members. Yet, uh, by their own count, there were only 547 lawyers who attended that SGM. The cases in court were filed by 1,047 lawyers, and mm. there were thousands more who signed these petitions against this arbitration center. Mm -hmm. What I want to ask the chair is what is so special about these 547? especially as just opposed against 1,047 members of the Law Society of Ten. Mm -hmm. Why can't they listen to their own membership? What is so special about this 547? Number two, mm -hmm. the documents that have now been provided to us following this court order by the High Court have shown massive discrepancies in even the project post. The LSK chair seated there cannot tell you whether there is a big deal for the construction of the arbitration center in South Sea. So asking what is the cost of the project of the arbitration center, let him give us a figure today. I also wanted to address myself to the second issue of the New Law Society Act. Mm -hmm. uh, you see the problem we have with this act, uh, and in the first communication as president of the Law Society of Kenya on the 14th, the chair, Mr. Mutua, wrote a letter to the membership, and in that letter he did two things. Number one, he insulted the 10,047 lawyers, calling them uh, people motivated by political and bigoted interests by just raising questions about the arbitration center. Mm -hmm. We took a legitimate route of raising objections by going to court. Why would that warrant insults from our own chairman? Number two, in that, uh, what he called dispatch from the president, he indicated uh, that the amendment on the requirement of how many years of practice somebody has to have in order to pass or to be eligible to run for president of the law society, that that has been stayed at 15 years in parliament, and that uh, the, the, the wording of the act that indicated otherwise was but an error that was. Uh, you know, inserted into the act at the government printer. When we look at the parliamentary answer, mm -hmm. the answer which is the authoritative document on the proceedings of the House shows that an amendment was moved by uh, the chair of the Legal Affairs Committee, the Honorable Jim Ponga, to make it an option that you are either a member of uh, the council a yeah. former member of the council or somebody who is qualified to be appointed as Supreme Court judge. Any of those three, not both of those requirements. So why would the Law Society of Kenya president lie to the membership in his first official act as the president of the Law Society? Thank you. That is all. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Edwin Sifuna, just calling us on a number of issues there. So let's begin with the arbitration center. Um, and it's starting there with the fact that he argues that as members they had to get court orders to have the details of the project released to them. Why was that the case? Let, let, let me first say this, um, that uh, one, uh, the, 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 we, we will not go into the details of uh, what is happening in court. But I'll mention a few things. Okay. The first one is that uh, Mr. Sifuna, as a lawyer, knows that uh, once we issue a notice for member to attend a special general meeting, mm -hmm. it communicates to every single member of the law society to attend that meeting because decisions and resolutions will be made in that meeting. Uh, Mr. Sifuna, my learned friend, is now 
complaining that decisions were made by only 547 lawyers uh, on behalf of the rest of the membership of the Law Society. Mm -hmm. He did not find time to come to the special general meeting for purposes of advancing his views on the International Arbitration Center. Mm -hmm. The AGM, a general meeting, uh, is called to allow every member to come and say his position, and the majority would carry the day. But didn't they still say their, and make their position clear in this petition, which had even more members signing opposed to what was agreed I'll, upon? I'll, I'll tell you this. It doesn't matter whether you collect um, signatures of 1,000 members. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter whether we collect a signature of 2,000 members uh, out there without procedurally following the procedure which is laid down for a lawful resolution. That is not a resolution. Mm -hmm. And if you look at even the document which is purported to be for a thousand lawyers uh, who um, petitioned the court, that document was not meant for court action. That document was meant, if you look at the, 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 the heading of that document, mm -hmm. was meant for people to say we need more details on this and this and that. And that is one of the issues we've taken up in court, that okay. this 1,000 members does not represent their wish to go to court, not at all. And, all right. uh, and, and, and um, uh, he's also mentioned uh, uh, something to do with... Uh, the project cost. The project cost. Yes. Uh, I think it is good for anyone when they make pronouncements, whether in social media or on TV, to have their facts clear. And as a lawyer, that is a, a, a cardinal rule for you. One of the things is the project cost is 1.2 billion. Mm -hmm. We have experts in finance, it's called PKF, who are a reputable firm of, 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 of uh, finance. Uh, we have a, a project manager who have made a computation of the cost of the project to 1.2 billion. The structure, brick and mortar, costs 600 mil million. Fittings cost 35% of the entire project. Professionals are paid 12% of the project. The loan itself, which we are taking from a financial institution, uh, brings on board another, I think, uh, 7%. Um, we have what we call uh, adjustments, which is 5%. And those computations are clearly laid down by our financial advisor who have computed and it has come to 1.2. But somebody who probably uh, has other motives or probably has not looked at the document keenly will only pick the structure, which is 600 million. That is not the entire cost of a building. We are looking at uh, having that hotel facility fitted with uh, beds, uh, the kitchen fitted with all the uh, uh, apparels. So if, if, if you compute that, it has been computed to the spoon. When you compute that to the spoon, it comes to 1.2 billion. Mm -hmm. And the breakdown of the details have been provided to all the members, and, and there is nothing which uh, is being withheld by the lawyers. What he has mentioned about um, why did we have to wait uh, for some documents to be uh, released after the court, decision, court, court order. Right. We are professionals and we abide by the law. Uh, in some of the three documents which we had not, actually four documents which we had not released were related to consultancy contracts. In those consultancy contracts, which they have now, we have released, they showed very clearly that there was confidentiality clauses. And when there's a document which has a confidentiality clause, you cannot disclose that document to the public. But you can only do it when there's a court decision. Now that there's a court order that says release, we've released. We cannot now be held liable by the other professionals for releasing that document. And they have read the document, they have seen the confidentiality clause, which we had said, despite the fact there's a confidentiality clause, you as a member, you have a right to come to the Secretariat and mm -hmm. peruse and see what uh, that document uh, uh, speaks to. That we had in indicated. But okay. one would choose probably to, to, to express themselves either in ignorance or as a result of um, other considerations.